All right. Welcome back to the second module of Blue Prism. This module talks about Blue Prism's Process Studio. So when you create processes inside Blue Prism, they are very much like the uh, common business flow diagrams that you usually create using other process modeling applications like MS Visio. We use several standard flow diagram symbols and notation to construct this process diagram. The key difference with Blue Prism diagram and any uh, inert two-dimensional representation of a process is that the Blue Prism process diagram can actually run and will interact with applications, manipulate data, and perform decisions and calculations. Let me walk you through how we run a process inside Blue Prism. So here we are inside our virtual machine and we'll bring up Blue Prism. Blue Prism comes up. It asks for a username and password. And we'll click on sign in. Let's maximize this. Let me show you the steps how to import the example Blue Prism processes that are available to carry out these exercises. So we'll go to file, click on import, we'll browse. I downloaded it here in this folder. It's this uh, foundation training setup for Blue Prism version 5.0. And it is this BP release file that we need to select, click on open. Click next and click finish. We get this example process. Let's open it by double clicking it. Let's maximize this window. Now let's run this process by clicking on this go button in the top left corner. You can even press F5 as a keyboard shortcut. I'll press this button, which makes this process run. And the process has completed. So we saw that when the process was running, uh, the flow of the diagram was being highlighted in orange. We can reset the process diagram by clicking this reset button and then run it again. Let me run by pressing F5 this time. And you can see the orange highlighting, which shows the stage that is being executed at the current time. When you run this, it may not show you this read data from spreadsheet uh, tab. You may have a simple uh, process, example process, but it would run in a similar fashion. So one thing that you need to keep in mind is that whenever you run your process diagram within Process Studio, you should always reset it. Uh, so that it always runs from the beginning. Otherwise, it will try to resume from wherever you stopped this process diagram. So if it was end, it will try running from there. Let's close this process studio. And I'll demonstrate you creating a new process. So when we are inside this studio, which we can select either from here or from here, we can create a new process by right-clicking processes and saying 
create process. So we'll name this process first process. Click next. We can enter a description for this process and it is recommended that you always enter a description so that you get to know from the description what that process is doing. This is my demo process. Click finish. So the new process appears. Let's open it by double clicking on it. We'll maximize it. So here we see the stages toolbar. To bring these stages onto this process diagram, we simply select that stage, drag and drop it onto that page. Okay, so that's how we bring them onto the page by dragging and dropping them. Another way to bring stages onto this page is we can select some stage which keeps a blue rectangle around that, which creates a blue rectangle around that stage and the icon of the mouse also changes. Now when I place this mouse anywhere on this process diagram and click, left click that is, I can produce multiple stages of that kind. Let's say I want multiple data items, so I'll select that. I'm not dragging dropping it, I simply selected it from the toolbar and I can click on my left click on my process diagram to create multiple instances of that stage. So that's another way to create these stages. Now let me show you how we can look at the properties of these stages. I'll go ahead and select the pointer. So to open the properties, we can simply double click that particular stage. It will bring up the properties of that stage. Okay, so you can see it has a name, description and some inputs. And on the right, we can see some uh, data types. We'll see more of them later. So I'll cancel it. And to save this process diagram, though this is not doing anything, we simply have several stages on this process diagram. We can click on this save button. And before saving, it asks for a summary of the changes. I added some stages to the process diagram. Click on save changes and we are done. We should be saving our blue prism diagram quite often. Let me show you how we can delete some of these stages. I can drag the uh, mouse click to select the stages that I want to delete. And if I want to delete like more stages now, so I can press the control button and left mouse click and then drag the mouse, which selects additional stages. So pressing the control and left mouse click and then dragging the mouse selects additional controls in the selection. And let me click hit the delete button. This deletes all the stages that I had selected. We can delete all these stages but start and information stage are the two stages that cannot be deleted. Even the end stage can be deleted. So let's use this link to link the start and the end stages. And let's click save. Cleared the stages, linked start to end. And we can hit on save changes. Now let's run this process and it is completed that we can see here in the title bar to rerun it we need to reset and let me press f5 this time and it runs we can check our process diagram in blue prism for any configuration errors by clicking the validation button on the toolbar let me reset this and here is the validation button. Right now it doesn't have any errors. We can see zero errors. But let's say if I remove this link, I delete it and reset. You can see that the error has increased to one. When I click on it, it says the main page has an error. That is if I move it around, 
you can see this is the main page. The stage name that has an error is the start stage. So start stage has an error. Action is validated. Description is missing link. The link is missing. So make sure that you look for errors before you run your process diagram so that you know that your process diagram is free of errors. Or if there are errors, then you can go and fix them. Now there are zero errors. Let's talk about the decision stage. Decision stage is used to fork in the process diagram. That is, we create multiple paths in the process diagram. So we check for a condition which is specified as an expression. So if that expression is true, we take one path. And if that expression is false, we take another path. So let me demonstrate you that. We we'll put our decision stage onto this diagram and we'll give the expression. So double clicking on it brings up its properties window. And here in this expression box, we give the expression. So we'll say we'll hard code some expression like one is greater than two expression. These expressions should return booleans. We can validate if it is returning boolean or not. It says yes, it is valid. And we can click OK. We'll add another end stage. And let's link these stages together. This is the yes path and this is the no path. Let me move it around. Now let's run this and we saw it took the no path because the expression that we had given was one greater than two is always false. Let's change that expression instead of greater than we'll say less than reset and run it again and see which path it takes and this time it took the other path because that condition is always true. We can even like change these yes and no links. Uh, so if we right click this decision stage, we can click switch, which makes this as the yes path and this as the no path. So if without changing the expression, if I now run it again, we see we should see it takes the different path now because it has been switched. So one thing that you can notice here is that a page can have multiple end stages, but there can only be a single start stage on a page. Similar to the decision stage, we have a calculation stage. Uh, difference between decision and calculation stage is that uh, a calculation stage doesn't fork paths in the process diagram. Also, uh, the calculation stage doesn't always need the expression to be a boolean it can that expression can result anything and we need to store that expression somewhere and we store that expression in data items which is this data items are just like your variables in other programming languages and you cannot link the data items within the process diagram they always float and cannot be physically connected to any other part of the diagram let me show you an example of calculation and data item stages. Here we are inside a process diagram. Let's delete the decision stage and the end stage. We'll add a data item. And we'll rename it to Z. We'll change the uh, data type to a number. This is a drop down. So we'll select it to be a number so that it will store number and its initial value as nine. Click OK. We'll add a calculation stage. Double click it to open its properties. We'll name it to set Z. And then we'll, we'll type some expression into this expression text box and we'll say store that expression result in some data item. So where we will store it on the right hand side, we see here is the numbers data type. 
items data items so we have z so we can drag and drop z into the store result in field and let's type the expression 7 so it will store 7 inside this data item z and z can store only numbers so we have given the expression to be a number click ok and let's link this calculation stage notice the data item cannot be linked it is floating around let's reset run it and we see z changed from 9 to 7 let me rerun it you can notice z is 9 if I press F5, it should change to 7. If I open up the data item Z, I can see the initial value is 9, but the current value is 7. We can also use data items inside expressions. When we are using data items within expressions, we enclose them in square brackets. So here, let's add two more data items. So I select that and click two more data items. Now one we'll call as x, it's a number whose initial value is 3. And we have y, which is again a number whose initial value is 7. We'll change the expression here. Instead of saying seven, we can type X. Notice I'm using square brackets uh, for data item names, or even I can drag and drop these. So for Y, if I drag and drop, it puts square brackets with the data item name on it. So we are storing the result of expression X plus Y into Z. We can validate. Yes, it is valid. Click OK. Let me align up these data items, reset, zero errors, let me run it, and Z should become result of X plus Y. Let me reset it again, run it again, so that we can see Z is changing to the result of X plus Y. We can also use the data item that is used to store the result inside the expression. For example, here, if I open up properties for this calculation stage, I would like to multiply X with Y and add the result to Z. So instead of plus, I put asterisk for multiplication and store the result in Z. So I can see here that I'm using this store result in data item within expression as well. So if I reset it, I should now get X into Y, that is 7 into 3 plus 9. That should be 30 and it should get stored in Z. So if I press F5, I should get 30 inside Z.